Hi, I'm Antoine Brown. And I'm Jeanette Brown. And welcome to part two of Handle with Care. We had our first part this morning, and tonight we have our second part. And we look forward to having a good time tonight. Yes, um, uh, we're focusing on Black Love for Black History Month, and this is part two of our Black Love program. Yep. So before we get started, we'll introduce ourselves a little bit. We're going to talk about marriage tonight, and we have two of our best friends right with us, and it should be pretty cool, but I'll introduce us. So um, me and Jeanette met in 1992, um, and we met over um, my cousin's house. Jeanette was with her friend and she came, her friend dated my cousin and then Jeanette came with him one day, with her one day and that's where we met. Then we first started dating and that was in 1992. And then um, Jeanette was a senior or going to her senior year in high school. And we dated all the way through college, all the way through um, until we were engaged. Until we were engaged. <laughs> Six years later. Yeah. And then we were married <laughs> in 1998. And we've been married for 20... Almost 23 years. Almost 23 years. And we've been together for 29 years. You got something to add to that? No. Nothing that, That's it in a nutshell. That's it in a nutshell. Our, our shirts, though, if you notice, mine says protect him. Hers says protect her. I'm a, her, I'm a him. Protect him, protect her. I don't know if you're saying that. Okay. All so. right. So um, tonight, uh, we're going to dig into a few videos, invite our friends on with us. And first, we're going to show a little video, and then we're going to introduce the other couples that are here with us. And I'm sorry, we didn't mention, we're from Ephesus Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Saginaw. Um, and let's get started with the introduction. You ready? You got something else? No. All right, let's go. So we got a video for a few of our friends and we're introduced now. Okay, so our first couple is my sister, um, one of my sisters, uh, Lisa Reed. Uh, they say we look like triplets, me, her, and my other, my twin, my actual twin, and her husband, Andre Reed. Uh, I met Lisa, I've known her for years. I've known uh, Andre, which who we call Taco, for years. Then I met Lisa when she joined my our sorority. So we're sorority sisters, but I say that we are real sisters in real life. So welcome, Taco and Lisa Reed. Yay! And the, and the other couple is um, Janelle's twin, other twin sister, part of the triplets. And that's Janelle and my newfound brother for the last 20-something years, Eric Smith. Yay. All right. Welcome. So... We wanted uh, Taco and Lisa and Janelle and Eric to join us uh, this evening to talk about marriages because they've all, they've all been married for quite a while. Uh, we wanted to focus on black love and in my eyes, they are uh, black love. And we're, like we said, we're gonna have some videos, discussion, and we're just gonna keep it real. So we've already told the couples to keep it real and honest, which I know they will. So this will be just our fun night to celebrate black love. All righty, so we're going to start with introductions, and I got a little bell up here. So I'm giving everybody two minutes, but if you can take three, <laughs> are you pointing at Taco? But we're going to start with um, Eric and Janelle. You guys are on mute, but once you guys come up and mute, we'll start with um, Eric and Janelle first, and then we'll move on to Taco and Lisa. If you guys can introduce how you guys met, how long you've been married, kids, all that good stuff. All right. Well, hello, everybody. I am Eric. And this is Janelle <laughs> Smith. Um, so we met in high school. 
actually. We can't remember how we met. I was a basketball player and she was a cheerleader, but for rival schools. And um, she probably noticed me after I dunked on her team a few times. But uh, somehow we hooked up. We went to homecoming together in high school. And um, then we kind of went our separate ways for about eight years. And then we got back together. Um, and we dated for about a year and a half. And then we were married in 2002, which was 18 years ago. And we have two children. Um, Caleb is almost 17 next week. And Cole is 12 and a dog. Named? Named <laughs> Ivy. And she's up for sale. Actually, we'll give it to you. She's first. <laughs> All righty. Andre, well, I call him Taco. Um, so Taco and Lisa, you guys up next. Okay. Well, I'm Taco. And I'm Lisa. And um, we've been together for 23 years. We married this July to be 22. Um, we met um, through a KCP, a King Chavez Parks program while we were in high school. I think probably even middle school. Middle school, high school. Saw each other in passing, um, but no, um, she didn't put me on her radar yet. So I was still no love and connection. free uh, <laughs> up until um, college, uh, about 1998. And she saw me and she knew she had to snatch me up. <laughs> so, you know, I, I applaud her for taking a risk. <laughs> um, but we've been, we've been married again, 20, be 22 years this year. We have an 18-year-old daughter um, who's actually playing right now. Um, but we're going to have fun tonight and then watch the game later. Yep. Just like Taco said, we've been married for a long time. Uh, we knew each other in the past, but just as friends, didn't like them or anything like that. But then it obviously it became a connection over the years. Um, and we got kind of officially going together, Colton, as people say, <laughs> uh, about six months, not even six months. And then we got engaged. And then within a year, we were married. Yeah. Pretty much that's how it got went. Uh, 19 and 20, being engaged was really difficult. But you see, we're still here and we're still going. Yeah. Right. And I'm glad you mentioned that because that's a segue to kind of like my first question. So when Antoine and I got married, I feel like now looking back, I felt like it might, we might have been too young because we had to grow up together. I was 23 yeah. and he was 26. So we had to basically grow up on our own. So do you feel now that you would have waited or do you feel like that was the right time to get married when you got married? Um, honestly, I don't think you can ever be ready to be married. Um, you're going to have to learn, you know, wing it. Um, people, everybody's going to always give you advice on how, what, why, when, and where. Um, one of the best pieces of advice somebody gave us was to keep our business in our house. And I think we've been, done a pretty good 97, 98% <laughs> <laughs> kept our business in the house. Um, it's not hard. Um, but everybody that's in the house has to know how to play that game, <laughs> even with your kids, you know. But other than that, um, yeah, I, yeah, you we could have done it differently and waited. Um, but I, I always say a man knows what he wants. And, um, you know, if, if I would have strung her along, um, knowing what I wanted initially, knowing that I wanted her to be the last one, I think that would have been selfish, even though we didn't have – all the money to, to to live sufficiently we had enough to make it and obviously we've grown just like i'm sure the rest of you guys have grown to where your income is now so i mean love saved the day and i mean it's, it's doing it right now yeah a lot of people thought you know i was pregnant you know and that was the case <laughs> It's not 20 something, but you know, that was like a negative thing. People kept saying, Lisa, why do you guys want to get married so young and so fast? You guys should wait, should wait. But we just felt it was the right time. We wanted to, we didn't want to live in sin. You know, we wanted to move in together and do the things that married people do. So that's just what we did. And it worked out just like they say, you know, we started from the bottom, you know, really. And now we here, yeah. you know, how some people marriages, which it works if they get married older and they, you know, a house and got to come together and finances. Okay, this is your chair from your house and my chair from my house. Okay, which one are we going to do? No, we came together with absolutely nothing yeah. and everything is ours together. So 
and you know to your question too i don't know you know we kind of talk about that sometimes you know will we be together if we would have waited i mean i don't think so because certain times it just we just kind of go separate ways <laughs> he's like lisa shut up okay <laughs> <laughs> so it was best that he got you in. <laughs> okay, yeah. We did it and we here. <laughs> yeah, right. I was about to ring my bell, but I didn't right, right. right. And so if you guys don't mind me asking, I know you just forgot to say it. What church do you guys attend? Oh, we are part of New Christ Community Church in Saginaw. Thank you. Eric and Janelle, you guys got us on mute again. What what church? Ephesus Seven Day Adventist. Oh, okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> That was, an, that was an inside <laughs> joke. Right, right. So, um, but, uh, I'm, well, with the being married, we weren't super young when we got married. We were 27 and 26, or 27, 28, one. Mm -hmm. But I think anytime you get married, like Taco said, it's, you're not ready for it because you're going from a life as a single person to a life as a couple. Mm -hmm. And everything before that, you've been a single person. You haven't had to ask anybody to go out or anything like that. And whether you get married at 27 or 50, Mm -hmm. I think that's the case. So it's always an adjustment. Yeah, I wasn't ready when I was 19 and 20, 21, 22, 23. No. no. Yeah. I think for Antoine and I, we, um, when we were dating, we were together every single day on yeah. the phone all yeah. day, every yeah. day if we weren't together. So basically, yeah. and he knew I was not moving in with him without a ring. So it was either marriage or nothing. Right. See, I don't know about you guys, but I think like, I never had my own place. Like, my first place was with Jeanette. You know what I mean? So that's all I know. <laughs> like, when I was in college, I stayed home because I went to Saginaw Valley. So my first place has always been Jeanette, the only house I ever had. So I don't know anything different. Oh, it's different when it's your place and then you come together. Yeah, we both had our own place. We lived in different cities when we started dating the second time around. So Got it. it's different perspective. Yeah, and just, just like with Jeanette, um, Jeanette said we were together every day, even mm -hmm. though Lisa lived in Flint and I was in Saginaw. Um, you figure gas was like 78, 79 cent at the time. Wow. Um, it wasn't even a dollar yet. It was just, it was kissing a dollar and going back down. And I, I didn't pay a dollar for gas for a while. Um, but you figure just hitting the highway, either going to Flint or her coming to Saginaw, we literally saw each other every day. Mm -hmm. so I was like, either I can watch a TV show for a half an hour, or I can go to Flint and see Lisa with in that drive. So we literally saw each other every day, and that kind of accelerated. Um, I think the courtship because we were together so much, um, just like you guys said. Uh, and you know, it seemed like a short amount of time, but the love just it grew stronger. And uh, I guess you know that's where it is. Yeah, I mean, I don't think ideally anybody would want to get married at twenty-one and twenty. But my mom and dad actually did it too. We didn't even know that until we started doing the math. Uh, we had Lolo the same age they had me um, and they got married and they were married for three years and had me in the third year. And the same thing with us, we were married three years and they had Lolo in the third year. It wow. wasn't by design, it just happened that way. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. So we're gonna do, um, we're gonna get into the first video. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start that now. So when we're looking at building a uh, healthy and loving marriage, I like to think about the word kiss and the value that that word brings to a loving marriage. Uh, on the one hand, it speaks to uh, the contact that a uh, husband and wife make with each other, a uh, face-to-face -face coming together uh, with a level of consistency. And we talked about the three different types of kisses that a couple uh, would experience one being a friendly kiss uh, and that's just a quick peck that says glad you're part of my life um, you're someone special to me uh, the second is a sensual kiss and the sensual kiss is a kiss that might be a little longer a little more passionate uh, it says that not only are you someone special but I have special feelings for you and then there's the uh, sexual kiss and the sexual kiss is a goal oriented kiss a kiss that says that we are initiating uh this is a prelude to a special action that we get to share with each other and so we talked about the importance of couples kissing and when they kiss how it continues to allow a couple to stay connected 
uh, even when they're upset with each other. They know that at some point we're going to have to come back together and kiss each other uh, at some point. And so it doesn't allow you to drift too far away from each other, even during the times of anger. It says that I know that I'm going to have to come back and reconnect with you. So that's one type of KISS when we think of KISS. The other thing when we think of KISS is the actual acronym KISS. Years ago, people used to use that acronym to say, keep it simple, stupid. Now the keep, keep it simple part, uh, I think that's that has a great sentiment to it. The stupid part uh, is kind of harsh. And so I believe what we talk about is keep it simple, sweetheart. And that's a statement to married couples to let's just keep our relationship simple and let's let's not allow it to become complicated and convoluted with uh, everybody else's opinion but let's do love simply the way that God says to do love so one of the first things we talk about in a relationship that is being kept simple is we have to understand what God says love is and God says in uh, 1 Corinthians the 13th chapter he lays out a lot of the specifics about what love actually is and it's important uh, for, I believe for couples to get that scripture in their hearts and so as we do uh, marriage counseling as we talk to couples uh, we talk to those couples about learning that chapter together and allowing uh, what God says is love to define how they do love with each other you know society teaches a lot of romantic concepts about what love is but some of the specifics, love is patient and kind and long-suffering. Some of those things are not necessarily as romantic or sexy, but they are ingredients that make for a healthy, loving relationship. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to kick this off about, we're going to just go right into it about uh, intimacy and kissing. Eric and Janelle, is kissing and intimacy uh, important in a marriage? Yes. Yes, very. Can you explain? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, yes. if, like my man said, because I'm, I like kissing. So, you know, if if I'm leaving for the day or before we go to bed tonight, I try to make sure I give her some kind of kiss, at least something to say, you know, to acknowledge that you ain't just somebody that I'm sharing a house with. Um, <clears throat> so I think it, it sends that message and it's good to have, it's good to just have that contact, that kind of physical contact and kissing is a good way to do it to me. <laughs> All right, Lisa and Taco, different question for you. Is, let's talk about romance. Is romance important to you, Lisa, as a female? And Taco, what's one of the most romantic things you've ever done for Lisa? I wanted that question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is important to me. Um, sometimes you got to really think think about it and do things to make it romantic a lot of the times because you've been married so long and it's routine. Then we only have one daughter, so we pour everything into her. So sometimes you kind of forget about those romantic things that you need to do to spice things up or to keep it romantic. So it's very important to me. But I can be real difficult. So what was the best thing you've done? Um, honestly, I don't know the most romantic thing because Lisa <laughs> is the romantic. Uh, oh. Yeah, I, I'm not, I mean, I like romanticism, but I'm not, Lisa comes up with the ideas um, and we do it. And I'm like, wow, that was a good idea. And I, I, I never would have thought of it. So I'm like, I'm in that aspect, I'm a real dude because I, it is, but other aspects, I, I could tap into my feminine side and then just make it make it work. But yeah, yeah, Lisa's the more the romantic than I am. Yeah, I was gonna say that men are kind of, I, I think Taco hit it on, uh, he hit it right there on the nail, that men kind of don't think out the box like women do when it comes to romantic things. Um, Lisa, so you tell us like, what is something maybe you've done for him that you felt that was really romantic? I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was either headed to California to sing and um, oh, yeah. we, um, so either I, I was going or coming back and, I, back and it was warm outside. We didn't, we couldn't go to the beach or something. Lisa had the, 
She had a, 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 a spread in the garage. <laughs> she had a blanket, like we was on the beach, a blanket, a basket, food, everything spread out on the garage floor with a um, cover, you know, with the um, chocolate cover. Chocolate chocolate cover. It, no, I'm talking about with the um, um, blanket, you know, that for the, for the, as if we were on a picnic or, or barbecue picnic, whatever. And um, that was in the garage. And I was like, wow, real music. And, you know, you would think about something like that on a field or on a beach, but we actually did it in our garage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's that's nice. Nice. Okay, Janelle wanted this question. So Janelle, what's the most romantic thing Eric has done? Um, no, she I was gonna tell you what I've done that was romantic. Eric is not a romantic person. Most but men are. I think the most romantic thing he's ever done, he wrote me a poem because he's a writer and a poet and he had it um, made into glass like a crystal with the poem. I do remember that. But the, most, the most romantic thing I've done was for our 15 year anniversary, every day leading up to the 15th, like the day of our anniversary, I gave him a gift, 15 gifts, and it was a card that says, I love you and the reason why I loved him, but every card said a reason I loved him with a clue or a gift or something to go with it. That is good. Nice. It was very romantic. And Janelle is, she's much more in tune with it, like Taco said, than I am. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and I don't know if it's just men or how we work or what have you, but I thought the other thing was the most romantic thing I did. That means men need to step their game up just a little bit. Hold on, something good going on here. What's the, what's the other thing, Eric? <laughs> I heard that. Uh, uh, for Valentine's Day one year, he cooked me a candlelit dinner and he had a bunch of post-it notes all over the place. Right. And each oh. note was a different reason why I love it. Oh, take note. Player, player. Twan, what's something I've done for you that was romantic? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I'm about to say, I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but, um, man. And you got me thinking now, Jeanette. I Scavenger have to think. Scavenger hunt, remember? Oh, yeah. Okay. So that was kind of weird. So one day, it wasn't weird, but one day, at, was that at work? Yeah. I had when I was at work, job. people at my job was leaving weird stuff on my desk. And I didn't really know where it was coming from. And it was right? a scavenger hunt. It was Tell a scavenger hunt. Do, the next, do the next thing, the next step, get to the car. And it led all the way up like to. Like he had to go to across the street to. Um, it was something across the street. At it's Coco Loco now, right? Yeah, but you had to go there. Then that that owner had the next scavenger hunt message for you. you oh yeah, Lover's okay. Now it's, com it's coming back. All now. these different places. <laughs> yeah. Back. I'm sorry, man. I put forget. a lot of work in it. No, yeah, that was nice, but I do remember that. All right. what okay, about, what about hey, I have to add too, if I can. Go ahead. Go ahead. I Tom. Had Lisa's 40th birthday party. That was the craziest thing I ever did. Yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah, that was a piece of work. I was stressed out, but um, I knew I owed her because she had given me two birthday parties. And Probably she, 10. No, gave 15. Me two. <laughs> and gave Lolo 18, <laughs> but I had two, and so no, I, she at least two. had to get one. No. More yeah, than... that, was, that was nice. That, that was, was a good nice. party. That was really nice. That was the most I, I, I've done. Yes, yeah. Okay, so I want to know with Eric and Janelle, you all have some younger children, like because because Lolo is going to college, our kids are out of the house. So because you have kids at home, how do you manage your intimacy? <laughs> <laughs> how do we manage our intimacy? Um, locked doors and <laughs> late night <laughs> <laughs> and, and the very occasional uh, getaway. Um, it is different with, with kids because even then, you know, it, it's just different when you know you got kids in the house. You know, you can lock the door or do whatever else you want to do. It's still in the back of your mind, you know. They still knock on the they door. Still, and then they still come and knock. And now they're of the age where if they come down and find a locked door, now they, they get to thinking, what are y'all doing <laughs> there? Why is the door locked? Call you know? ask. Why is your door locked? <laughs> right. What are you doing? Huh? Right. So <laughs> it's always interesting when when, you know, here at the house. Um, so I think it's important and this is something I want to do more often is, you know, we just go somewhere and get away for a weekend or even a night or something um, just so we can be 
a little more relaxed. Yeah. So Lisa and Taka, last question, and we'll go to our next video. How do you spice things up now? Because you've been married 20 some, 22, 23 years almost. How do you spice it up since you've been together so long? Yeah, how do you spice it up? <laughs> Don't be putting me on the spot. How do you spice it up? Go ahead, go ahead, boy. And has things evolved over the years or has it like, you know, got boring? Not boring. I'm, see, I don't know. I have a crazy amount of energy and Lisa doesn't. Too much. So, Most men do you, you know, you try to spice it up. So with us, a romantic evening has to be probably before eight, probably even by <laughs> six. Um, <laughs> Because Lisa, senior citizen, comes out, <laughs> and um, but Lisa gets up early, early, early. I'm up at the same time mentally, um, and I'm just waiting for the lights to go off. But I'm up in the head, you know, up mentally. Yeah, but I up work in the out. head, all right. No, but I, I work out. <laughs> I work out early in the morning. I mean, I'm up practically the same time she is. It's just that I have a high energy level, and you know. Lisa, you know, we're just trying to keep it spiced. Um, but yeah, Lisa doesn't have the energy for it right now. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult. Like you said, you have to do things to make it like, okay. And then certain times it's just like, oh, all right, here you go. Yeah. You but, know what I mean? <laughs> but with that, but with that being said, I always so I always draw comparisons on on, on everything. For instance, you guys had a meeting last night. The meeting was almost probably three hours. And so, yeah, yeah. I had two meetings, so back to back meetings too. So my thing is, you if you can do four hours, three to four hours with that, you can at least give me 15, 20 minutes. Oh. <laughs> when you put it that way, yeah, I can see. Or at least five minutes, right? You need more than five. But what I'm saying is, I, I, I think, I can, I deserve that, or she would even deserve that. But you know, that's where the struggle comes in. I'm like, you can't talk on the phone to everybody and then I can't, you know, we, we can't play football. You know what I'm saying? So it, she, gotta give you your, her, she gotta spend as much time as you as she does yeah. with the sorority and her other thing. Yeah, so that's just the thing about just balancing it all. And that's why I think, you know, it's an imbalance a lot of times. And so, you know, if you talk really about it, you know, I kind of think that it's seven days out the week and <laughs> it can at least be about three to four. I do conservative three days. It should be some practice happening for the big game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, Taco. I, you know, listen, you're right. Me and Jeanette, we went to marriage counseling with the pastor over yeah. 14. Then he was like, well, you know, how many times do y'all, I don't know what word to use. Um, like, you like, um, you know, once, twice a week. He was like, what? Yeah. Like, once or twice a week? I was like, oh, Pastor. Okay. Right, you're right. Pastor Brownwell, he was like, no, nah, you need about five, six times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a job. Right. Your kids, cook, hey. clean. Family, but you go to your job, you go to your job for five days and you're there for eight hours. No, 12. <laughs> that's to get a paycheck, but that's to get a paycheck and health insurance. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to release. <laughs> if you don't release, you're built up. So if you don't have, a, I'm telling you, you, you ever seen you shake up a bottle and you got to let those things out? You got to release. So... <laughs> Hey, I'm saying. Twan and Eric, we work hard. We work hard. And I think the payoff is the release. So Eric, you the agree? Eric Smith is sleeping as soon as his head touches the pillow. So. <laughs> See, y'all know too much. Jeanette know too much. That's what. <laughs> Do you agree, Eric? <laughs> no, listen, we going to clearly be in board meeting on Sunday after this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I ain't doing no, I ain't doing no cut. It's coming through live like it is. It's coming through like it's coming through. All right. All right, you ready for the next video? All right, so we have another video, um, and I'll get into that video right now, then we'll come back with more um, Q&A and discussion. All right. All right. All right.
The biggest challenges, I believe, for relationships today is uh, how, how we define what love is and how we define what a healthy marriage is and um, what we use to make that definition. I think that in our society and in, in Western culture, we have a lot of other things that really don't matter as much that we've allowed to matter a lot. The work status and, you know, the, the size of the uh, marriage or the wedding ceremony and where we went for a honeymoon. Was it a location wedding and uh, how many carrots in that ring? And uh, Some of those things that we put so much emphasis on. People are paying uh, an average of $30,000 for a wedding ceremony. And... Uh, not spending nearly that much or spending that much time focused on the relationship. So we have to kind of realign what we believe is healthy. And I believe that a healthy marriage, a healthy relationship is one that follows the order and structure that the Bible sets forth as a healthy marriage. It starts with the word says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor with the Lord. I believe that's still the truth. And, uh, uh, you know, in the scripture, when it talks about the 10 virgins, the wise and the five wise and the five foolish, I believe that that speaks to a reality today because a God man is looking for uh, the light of the Lord in a godly woman. And so when that light is trimmed and burning, when you're living a life for the Lord, then uh, a man of God is going to see that and be drawn to it. And so that's the beginning of a healthy and loving relationship. So, um, just because a couple both are spirit filled and love the Lord, just because they love the Lord does not mean that they are not going to have challenges. Uh, I think there's an old adage that causes people to believe that um, somewhere in the hemisphere or in the universe, there's this one person out there for me and somehow I'm going to find that person either at Walmart or at church. I'm going to come into that person. Well, the reality is I believe that there are a number of people that we could marry and as long as they are of the same faith the bible says don't be unequally yoked so god wants us to be of the same faith and when we are of the same faith and marry that god will be with us we're going to have challenges but he'll be with us through every one of them it's made some great points he who finds a wife finds a good thing yes That's he right. does um, one thing I want to talk about just with me and Antoine about being equally yoked, although when we met, we weren't the same um, denomination. He mm -hmm. was a Baptist, right? Correct. And I was an Adventist. Um, we were equally yoked in other areas in our life. And he eventually became an Adventist. He joined our CFL basketball team, ended up loving the church, made a lot of friends. He probably had more friends in Adventist uh uh, church than I do now. Um, he does more than I do now. Um, but so, um, Taco, I wanted to take it to you because when we spoke, you spoke, I loved what you were saying about being equally yoked. Can you expound on that when we spoke before? Yeah, we, um, I'm, I was non-denominational and Lisa, Lisa was, um, CME. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and Venice as well. Uh, yeah, her, she had uh, a Venice background with her family. But honestly, you know, we was in the church, but really not in the church. Uh, born and raised in the church, all of us pretty much on here have been, but not really, not living that life. Um, but, you know, we all grew together. Um, faith, we grew faith, uh, faithfully, uh, uh, strengthened our faith together. Um, but, you know, it's... I think the the focus, you know, we put God at the center of it, and then He made everything work for us, um, and that's the big thing about it. Um, I I don't think you can cross faiths. I don't think a um, you know, with a, in in most religions, the the woman follows the man. Um, so you know, a, a a Muslim man can date a Christian woman because when they get married, the the Christian woman will become a Muslim woman. Um, but you couldn't get a, you can't get a Muslim woman to date a Christian man because that Christian woman, I mean, that Muslim woman would therefore become a, a, a Christian and that's against their religion or against the law with them. So, you know, it, it, it varies with the law with, with in, in, in other religions with dating outside of the religion or the faith. 
and would be unequally yoked if you, if you per se, but you know, we, we, we grew and uh, we grew in so many ways, uh, financially, spiritually, emotionally. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's, cause you can have some people that are equally yoked spiritually, but then emotionally it's a catastrophe or financially, he is a wreck. He's a spendthrift or she's a spendthrift and can't balance a budget in the house. So it's, it's more than just being a, a spiritual connection. You got to have, and, and, and with compromise, it has to be on a higher end. If it's five things you got to match, it at least got to be three out of five and not two out of five. So mm -hmm. that's true. true. Now, Eric and Janelle, um, I, what I wanted to ask you was, he talked about in the video about challenges what was one of the most difficult things that you had to get through as a couple or a challenge you had to get through we had a few things I think the first uh challenge we had getting married was having a newborn baby neither one of us knew how to change a diaper knew anything about babies so that was the first challenge and I always say if you can get through a newborn baby you probably can get through anything who yeah. a newborn baby who does not sleep at night and Jeanette knows from experience and me with Caleb. I think the second big challenge we had was um, when I got laid off. Laid off. When he got laid off, but mm -hmm. um, I had faith. I knew Eric would get another job, so that wasn't a problem. And then I think the most recent challenge we had was his mother passing away. Right. Yeah, that was a challenge. And the um, other things that are challenging are schedules. You know, not everybody, not every couple's schedules are compatible as far as being awake at the same time or going to bed or waking up at the same time. Uh, Tawana and Ned, I know you all know what that's like and Taco and Lisa, I know you do too. And for us, you know, we, we have jobs where I'm up and I need to be on meetings by 7 a.m. And um, Janelle may not have to be on meetings that early. So that just creates, that's just another challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I can see her looking, no. looking at me. I can see her making that no, face. I was looking at Jeanette. Lisa, no, too. Lisa's at 10 o'clock. You can't call it to after 10 o'clock. I'm five. just going to tell her. Janelle, like Tommy from Merck, she don't got no job. No, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I can tell you. <laughs> this job. Janelle has a, a, a good job. I said I was laid off and she wasn't worried. That tells you something about her job. <laughs> right there, right there, right. <laughs> I know Antoine and us talked earlier in our earlier video. Um, in the morning about quarantining and how that's a big challenge for couples. So mm -hmm. we talked about that earlier and how we had to go to counseling with the pastor because it was something different being mm -hmm. around this man all day, every day. I and think it's more of you though. I agree, Janelle. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a question for you all. You mentioned it's, it's difficult being around him now all day and every day. But when you guys first started dating, you were around each other all day, every day. I every know. Day. I know, right? I really liked him then. Yeah. But I think it's because <laughs> right. I think the hard part, right? Because you're used to getting up and going to work every day, so you have like right. that nine to ten hours to yourself, and then you come back home and be with your wife. But then all of a sudden, now when you wake up in the morning, you're with her all day, every day. So you have to adjust to it. I mean, we we've adjusted well, but it was a couple it was a couple weeks, man, when I thought I was gonna be around the y'all house. <laughs> But see, we have the opposite. I like Eric being home during quarantine because when I worked, I worked from home for at least 10 years. But when I worked from home, I was bored. I needed some company. So I'm happy he's here to help out. I thought that too. But then just him even just talking and smacking, chewing, it was irritating me. So <laughs> I knew it was an issue. I was just like going crazy. Like, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our segue with being quarantined was being sick together. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah, talk about there, that. from there, we were cool. Um, it never really bothered uh, me. I don't know about Lisa, but it didn't bother me to be with her. All. But you know what? Honestly, I could be around her every day. I just think, um, I don't know if Lisa could be around me all day. She's busy. Cause she, that's because she's a busy body. She don't like being yeah. in one see, I, I can, I can, you know, I don't have to be right on top of her all day but as long as we're in the same vicinity I'm cool like I can work with her um I can see her walking down the hall and be cool I wouldn't have to be touching her all day just to know that she's close by in my presence um is satisfying so yeah that that I, I think you know being around each other is, is cool um I think it just um 
it, it, it makes you grow fonder for each other. You can see each other in that light. I know sometimes when she kisses me uh, before she goes and I smell her, I'm like, why do you, why are you smelling that good? <laughs> you went into the, you went into a prison. Why are you smell that good? Like, why you don't go funky to work? You know what I'm saying? Taco, I want you to talk about, because you, you, you mentioned this, and so you all both had COVID-19 together. You were very mm -hmm. ill. Talk yeah. about, because that's a big challenge as a couple. Talk about that. Well, when we got sick, she didn't believe we were sick, but I knew from the symptoms that we were having, we were sick. I knew we were sick. I didn't think COVID at first. <clears throat> um, and so it was a big mental strain. Mm -hmm. She did more of caring for me. She had less symptoms than I had. Um, and it really had to fend for me. And uh, it's, it's, it's obviously, I think uh, Janelle had it. Janelle, you didn't have it, did you? Just Janelle? Yeah, yeah it's the roller coaster of a day that you experience with the highs and the lows and how it affects everybody differently. It's just, it's, it's really, un you don't yeah. understand. It's something that you don't like, can I had cancer too. It's like you had cancer, Janelle, uh, I mean, Jeanette. And when you have cancer, you have chemo or you're gonna have radiation. Um, you have, in mind, you, gonna lose, you might lose hair or might not. I mean, it's, it's certain things that are guaranteed when you have cancer. Certain things guaranteed when you have the flu. With COVID, you don't know what you're going to experience. Mm -mm. And I think that with that ambiguity of it all is people can act like they know it. You get somebody from asymptomatic and, and on the other spectrum, you get somebody that dies. But so you had a good point, Taco, about, so Lisa was sick and she still yeah. took care of you. And yeah. that's, as, yeah. a, as a wife, and yeah. as a husband, that's our job to do that. So talk about yeah. that. Because Lisa, that took a lot because I know you were sick and I was texting you, calling you, and you were taking care of him, worried about him. That was real difficult. It was stressful. I mean, I broke down a couple of times. Like, I can't do this. Like, I need water, too. I need soup. I need somebody to take care of me. But he was sicker. You know, he was he was messed up. And now, I just think Every God, night around the same time, yeah. she would need some pain pills. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> me taking care of her was really minimal. I would give her pain pills and I would be laying in the bed and she was like, my body hurt. And so I would jump up and put myself to the side for her, but it still, it was nothing comparable to what she was doing for me. Cause you know, I was sick longer during the day. And when I would get excited and dancing around the house cause I had good energy and she would tell me to sit my butt down because she knew I was going to have a low probably 30 minutes later. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, I, she, every, every night, she would have these body aches and the headaches and I would have to give her some meds and then we would both go to sleep off the medication. But throughout the day, it was more so me, her taking care of me. And that was the longest that we've been together nonstop. Like you said, you all are working together at home and I, I'm an essential worker, so I have to go to work. So this was, we were together, oh, say, 20 something days, 28, days. 28, 29 days, didn't leave the house. So that's the longest we've been together nonstop. So that was difficult. But again, we were sick. So that was like taking it to a whole nother level. When I had to take him to emergency, when he got really sick, it was actually on our daughter's 18th birthday. Taco got so sick. You know, I text both of you like, hey, I don't know what to do. He temperature is 103. I'm about to go. Y'all like go. So took him to emergency and I had COVID. He had COVID and they were like, okay, I'm taking them through the doors. Of course, we're watching CNN and the news all day. And they told me I couldn't go to the hospital with them, meaning inside in his room. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? You know, no visitors, nobody. I'm like, well, I got it too, so I can be with him. They're like, no, I about lost my mind, you know, because we've been together so long. Because you know, on all the news, everybody you know, all was dying. All the news, people were dying. If you left your husband, that was the last time. Mm -hmm. Like, it was very emotional. I think, honestly, we grew closer over that time because it's like, oh, I really love him like that. You know what I mean? It's just like, wow. I didn't think yeah. that I couldn't live without you and I really can't. I mean, in that moment, th that's one of them type of moments where you you never think of like, if I had to wipe their butt, if they pooped on themselves yeah. and they was that sick, it. you would do it. Yeah. Cause like right now I'm like, I wouldn't wipe her butt. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, when we was both sick, you like, shoot, I'd do anything to make sure she's still here or make sure he's still here. So, you know, it, I guess in that in that desperate time, that chaotic time, you don't know what you'd be willing to do. And, and you know, your love is really put to test 
in that moment. Speaking but of I'm typing, I a, when I had um my when I was going through my breast cancer situation, I had my double mastectomy. I couldn't, of course, I couldn't move. I was so in pain. Twan had to literally wipe me. Um, he had to give me a shower. Janelle had to come over and give me a shower. But that first day in the hospital, like he had to do some stuff. And I said, I know this man loved me because yeah. I don't know if I could have done it. He had to do a whole bunch of stuff. So right. But then you just do it without hesitation, right? It's like it was automatic. It's I, that's the thing. Yep. That's the thing. Like, it's, you don't even think about I shouldn't do it. It's like, this is what I should do. But the part about that that was crazy was like Janelle came over and did some stuff that I was like, if I had a brother, I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? And Janelle did it without a problem. I was like, man, mm, couldn't do it. Yeah, it's so that was some stuff right there. From a regular sister though, too, or a regular sibling. They 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 was in the same sack together. So you yeah. know, it's, it's a totally different connection than a regular sibling. That's true. Now, Eric, you had to take care of Janelle when she had COVID, so how was that? I mean, it was, it wasn't a burden at all. I mean, that's that's my wife. I love her. I want to see, make sure that she gets through it all right. And so, you know, it wasn't. You know. I was trying to keep him out of the room because I didn't want him to get it, but he didn't care. He was like, mm -hmm. he would work like sitting in the room with me while I was in the bed, sleep or sick mm -hmm. or whatever. And he would just be like, I don't care if I get it. I'm just going to be in here with you. And he just mm -hmm. scared me. Because I mean, you just know, because I know when healthy, my wife don't like to be alone for long periods of time. So, I mean, if it was just being here in the room with her to just, so she knows I'm here, you know, I got, if I get it, I get it. You know, I, I got faith in God that if I get it, he gonna carry me through. So mm -hmm. she got it. If I get it, I get it. But um, one thing you, you know, mentioned, I'm talking about the quarantine um, and about the middle of, uh, we still in the quarantine, I guess. So at some point in the quarantine, we had been a few months together working from home together. And then I had to go overseas for work during mm -hmm. the quarantine and, it was crazy how you think, okay, you know, I'm spending all day around this person. You ask, you know, do you get tired of each other, whatever. But from the moment I got in the air on that plane going to Detroit, or not from Detroit going to Morocco, all I could think about is how can I get back home? Mm -hmm. How can I get, home, get back home to my wife? I miss her so much. I miss the family so much. And I mean, there was some other things going on, but um, that, that really opened my eyes to, to how close, you know, we've become. Is just, you know, I'm at work thinking of ways, hey, if I got to work an 18-hour day, if it's going to get me out of here and back home sooner, that's what I'll do. And this is leaving somebody that I just spent a month in quarantine with. So, you know, that's 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 kind of speaks to the love and, and, and the fact that you grow closer during quarantine sometimes. Sweet. All right, so we ready for our last video? No. What? All right, so we have, um, we got one last short video, guys, and we, we'll play that, come back, talk about that, and then we'll be all done for the night. When I think about couples uh, having healthy communication, I think about communication that is devoid of unhealthy habits. So what we tend to learn uh, either growing up or just through interactions with friends or movies or books that we've read, uh, we tend to take on uh, unhealthy, bad habits when it comes to communicating. And so we talk about these four different communication danger signs. Those danger signs are uh, escalation and negative interpretation uh, and withdrawal. And uh, we talk about how those danger signs are indicators that we are not communicating in a healthy way. And so we look at ways of avoiding or getting away from those dangerous uh, patterns of communication. And so we talk to couples about calling a timeout or uh, stopping the action that's negative, especially when it comes to escalating. Escalating being when couples start out with a fairly simple topic and end up uh, yelling and screaming at each other and uh, the stakes have been raised uh, highly. So we start out talking about why didn't you take the trash out and we end up screaming about who's going to have to leave and uh, that's a, 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 an extreme case of escalation but the way to interrupt that and the way to interject something positive is to stop the action uh, by calling a timeout and so we encourage couples to take a timeout take at least 30 minutes to calm down do things in advance 
uh, set up a timeout plan so that you know what you need to do when it's time for you to calm down. We believe that, that couples, uh, with regard to when couples uh, have had a difficult spot in their relationship, maybe they've fallen out of love. You know, the, the, the term falling out of love kind of implies that it happens quickly. But the truth is nobody falls out of love. If you've been in love, um, it, it's basically an erosion theory. It happens over time. It's just the same way that a ship goes off course. A ship doesn't immediately go off course with a hard right, but they kind of drift uh, based on other forces over time. And same thing happens in relationships. Uh, it's a combination of and a compilation of negative things happening, not being addressed. And so the same way that a couple finds themselves off course or falling out of or becoming less in love than what they've been before, we can just kind of right the ship and start instilling in that relationship healthier practices. Uh, it could be communication, it could be um, uh, uh, increasing their date nights, it could be um, how they deal with in-laws or how they deal with exes, uh, but just start addressing some of those areas in the relationship that have caused uh, challenges. All right, so that video um, was about? Communication and challenges in communication. So we're going to start off with the first question for Eric and Janelle. How do you resolve conflict as a couple? Um, Eric apologizes. <laughs> that's true, though. That is very true. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much the long and the short of it. But, um, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we resolve conflict, and we, and we don't always get it right. Um, you know, like the video mentioned, some arguments escalate from one <laughs> little thing to, to into something bigger. But usually when that happens, it's because one or both of us have other things that we never really talked about. And those things tend to come creep back up when the argument starts. And so now instead of arguing about one thing, we arguing about stuff that happened two weeks ago and, and all that kind of thing. So what Janelle is good at is, and what I'm not good at, is just pausing before the argument gets too big. Cause she'll tell me, I always want to know what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. And she'll tell me, I don't want to talk about it right now. And that like makes me want to know what's wrong more. So <laughs> that's something that um, that I've worked on it over the years. Again, I'm not perfect at it, but I think I've gotten a little better. We communicate and sometimes <laughs> we just, I just say, give me like 10 minutes. Just, to, you know, let me, calm, let me calm down. Like the Joe Budden song, 10 minutes? Okay, give me 10 mind. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> We communicate, but I told him, I, I try to tell Eric too, when we have conflicts and we're talking, all you have to do is say, here's some food, you want to go eat, <laughs> <laughs> go shopping. <laughs> here's, here's, here's a four care ring, you know, stuff like right. that. Does that matter. Bring the temperature way down. But um, yeah, I think that when the arguments that we've had that don't escalate are the ones where I am able to be like, okay, I'm going to give you your space while you you know, process what just happened, and then we come back later. You know, it's, it's almost never a good thing to just keep going when you're just not ready to to um, to be in a space to have a constructive conversation. Right, because I will win that every time. Well, she you wins know. everything every time. That's that's not even the conversation right there. <laughs> yeah, you tackle at least the same question. How do you resolve conflict as a couple? Yeah. Lisa never apologizes. <laughs> That must be a woman thing. Lisa is never wrong. Um, she, she honestly just keep it one hundred. Lisa likes to play the victim, um, and she doesn't like <laughs> that I challenge her with certain things. Um, <clears throat> she wants to control every. She's a control freak. We both yeah. know that, and she's never wrong. But she's not willing to apologize. I mean, she's not willing to compromise. So I do way more compromising <laughs> than she does which honestly I think is unfair, but I can tell her everything about herself. And if I say if I say one word wrong, she blows up that one word as if, you know, like with the impeachment, they're not even talking about the impeachment, they're talking about it's not constitutional. Not that the whole thing was, was wrong, the insurrection was wrong. Their argument is that it's not constitutional. That's Lisa. <laughs> he said the one word wrong and not even about the whole argument or the discussion. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it honestly, it, it, it'd be unfair. And I don't know, well, sometimes I want to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> 
because I just don't, it's like, I don't even know how to win. Cause I know I'm right. And then you, then you turn around and say, okay, my bad. And then you take another L, but you know, it's like, I got, I want to win sometime. One before. I won before. But Taco, I can say that sometimes, you know, when you married as, I'm, I'm, we've been married the least time than all y'all. And I was about to say when you've been married as long as we have, but you know, even after 18 years, I know when she is, um, I won't say apologetic, but I, I know when she's, when by how she acts after the argument, that that's as close as I'm gonna get to an apology, you know. <laughs> so if we get our Lisa, so Lisa is apologizing, she's just not saying it. Right. So if we get an argument and we're talking again <laughs> 10 minutes later, that was her apology. That's her apology. Right? What you mean, and, and her apology is, is, <laughs> if that's her apology, then it happens again. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really sorry for it? Because you know you the apology never comes. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing that really gets me heated in an argument. Eric, some, like in the beginning of our relationship, Eric would use like these really, really big words that I didn't know the meaning of. So I would say, <laughs> so I would say like, don't use big words with me. I don't even know what that means. Like, you know, I don't know what that means. <laughs> like he would use some long, like, I don't know word. I'll be like, you know, I don't know what that means. Don't like, what that means. Words. So, like so Lisa, wait, then you say, sure. Lisa, why don't you apologize when you're wrong? Because I'm never wrong. <laughs> there you go. That's got to be a female thing. No, that's an AKA. Then, why don't you all apologize when you're wrong? That's an AKA thing, bro. I go, you're right. That may be an AKA. AKA thing. I don't know. It's AKA. I do apologize, though. Jeanette apologized one time, right? So Jeanette, Jeanette never apologizes, but one day we had got into it about something. I don't really remember exactly what it was. But she was doing something in the kitchen and she was like, I'm sorry. And I got nervous. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, what you mean you're sorry? You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? But Jeanette, like, I just come to Jeanette and I go apologize. She just like Lisa. I apologize more now. That I, now, you can say in the past I didn't, but now I am, I'll take responsibility for my actions. And 29 I 29 years, Jeanette may apologize maybe five times. Yeah, I don't know. That's good. <laughs> Look, you're COVID, getting there. You're I getting can't. There. I can't even get no COVID sympathy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this joke of this, we gonna put that's because, that's because she had it too. So. So. <laughs> like he said, Man. I don't need a timeout. Okay, so <laughs> last thing I want to talk about is love languages. So I'm gonna act out these five love languages, and then you tell me each one of you tell me what's your love language. It could be even one or two of the these. Okay, so the first one is words of affirmation. Honey, your chocolates are delicious. <laughs> she went with chocolates, though. <laughs> I had to keep it in that Chocolates? All right, acts of service. Honey, I made you chocolates. <laughs> uh, receiving gifts. Honey, here's a chocolate. <laughs> Quality time. Babe, let's go out. And get some chocolate. <laughs> no. <laughs> and physical touch. Let me hold you like a chocolate. <laughs> Lisa, what is your love language? Uh, is it words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, or physical touch? Physical touch, I think. Talk about your love language. Lisa is, is receiving services. Receiving <laughs> acts of service. Yeah, acts of service. She she want me to do do something. She want me to go yeah. go out to eat or something. I can make her a dinner, and she say make a dinner win. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I ain't cooked the other night. <laughs> you help, baby. Yeah. <laughs> See, that was an act of service. Yeah. Act of service. It's always is 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 I can always do something more. You know, it's just like it's is no I can I can suck her toes. I could have sucked her toes, oh. but she, she was like, oh well. The pastor called the me. Pastor said, told me down. To shut it down. <laughs> You could have kissed the back of my knees too. <laughs> I was like, 
I thought I was doing something good with, you know, with that. But it's, it's something different. But, you know, with me. <laughs> So we are supposed to be physical touch and acts of service. Yeah. There you go. Talk about what's your love language. We had to we had to compromise too with that because I used to have to say he has to take me out once a week. I don't care what's going on. We got a date night once a week. That's what I want, and I know what he wants. So I did tell him. What that. do I want? You just want it. So I like to touch. So, yeah. oh, yeah. Physical touch. Really? Yeah. 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 touch. Take me out to eat, pamper me, because I am a cook or I love to cook, but I don't always want to cook. Right. So I need you to do that. And he's wow. been doing that. All right, Great Janelle job. and Eric, what's your love language? Well, for Eric, his love language. Wait, let him say what he is. is. You say what you <laughs> 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 Now, which Eric, one are you going to apologize? That's what I'm going to Well, <laughs> my love language is, what was the one about gifts? Uh, receiving gifts. Receiving <laughs> gifts. Yes, that's my love language. I know it. Mm. Eric, what's yours? Mine is words of affirmation. Well, you know mm. that. Did you know that, Janelle? Was that what I you were talking about? I, I do know that, and I'm a work in progress. <laughs> so, Antoine, what is your love language? I'm the touch. Physical touch? Yeah, okay. I didn't even know what that was, and it had to tell me last night. Physical <laughs> touch. <laughs> That was it. My love language is quality time. That's a fact. And acts of service. That's Those a fact. are mine. That's quality a fact. time is for sure. It. That is a fact. And acts of service, like you all can make dinner sometime. You can do do extra. We like that because we work hard and we need to rest at times. Yeah. Well, don't say that we thing because I don't cook. Uh -huh. <laughs> but tell y'all what, guys, that is it. So we want to close it out the right way. So the first thing we want to make sure we tell everybody that's listening that Taco, Lisa, me, Eric, Janelle, Jeanette, we are not marriage counselors. So this is just Based our journey, experience. right? So we're not trying to step on any toes, but we do want to thank Taco and Lisa. Yep. We really do. We appreciate thank you guys. And, and we want to thank yeah, Eric and Janelle. <laughs> we appreciate you guys. And plus, the guy on the video name was Bob Davis. Um, we appreciate him as well. Um, before we close it out, uh, we do have um, next week we are back with a different two couples. Um, and we'll be back at um, 11 a.m. next Thursday and also at 7.30 a.m. Um, at 7.30 p.m. We handle with care. <clears throat> and you also can um, uh, visit our website, esdac.org and fairhavensda.org to register for the um, the YouTube session. Um, any closing? I mean, let's do a closing. Yeah. Do a closing words. Give so closing remarks. Give everybody. mom some advice to advice. So advice to somebody that's married that maybe half the time in is us, maybe. Or maybe a, new, a new newlywed, whatever. Yep. Yeah, start would, with talk on this. I would say what people told us: keep keep your business in your house, um, regardless of how crazy your spouse is. Keep your business because it's it's not new that they crazy. You knew it. It's like I'm not gonna be somebody different all of a sudden when we get married. You knew I was nuts when you married me, and you chose to deal with my craziness. So I mean, just I, you know, if you are gonna pray for somebody in that deep, pray for them before you get married. Because after you get married, you really can't change them. You know, <laughs> but but nevertheless. Keep your business uh, concerning your family in your house. Um, keep God first and um, do your best to make each other happy. And I just want to add, I love your shirt, Jeanette. Thank you. Protect her and protect him. That's like one of our biggest things that we definitely oh, do. Yeah. Andre, Taco, I can say his full legal name. You know, he definitely. <laughs> Protects me and I definitely protect him. That's just something that we don't play about. Yeah. If I call him and say something, he won't be there whether I'm right, wrong, and different or whatever. So I definitely appreciate that. And I definitely want everybody to protect their spouse, you know, at all times. Amen. Eric and Nell closing. Well, I'm gonna get my advice in the Eric's. I think my advice would be do what works for you in your marriage. Every marriage is different. So mm -hmm. I hear people saying all the time, like, you don't cook for Eric. How can he, how, you know, did he marry you? It didn't work for us. He knew that going into the marriage. So it, he's good at cooking. I'm not. So I'm good at other things that he's not. So you do what works best in your marriage. 
And then also, um, like Lisa and Taco have each other's backs, no matter what. I tell Eric, like, you could be there wrong. And I could be looking in your eyes like he is there wrong, but nobody else will know that I think he's there wrong. I'm going <laughs> to argue and have his back. But when we get home, I'm going to tell him he's wrong. <laughs> so we tell each other all the time, just have my back no matter what. Yeah, I, I guess I would say, um, like Janelle said, do what's best for you, but learn each other's strengths and weaknesses and mm -hmm. let the pride go. You know, one thing about our marriage, Janelle handles the finances because she's better at it. That's that's the, that's flat out it. And uh, relative to the cooking, I think she told me she didn't cook on our first date in high school when I asked her to homecoming. I said, well, you go to homecoming? She said, you know, I don't cook, right? <laughs> uh, but no, the, the other thing I would say is... Um, Balance it out, you know, and, and look at things from a wide view. So when you're upset with somebody, remember the good things and remember the times that they were there for you and remember that that's really what counts. You know, all this, he didn't take the trash out today. Yeah, you might be mad at that for now, but remember that this is the person that took care of you when you had COVID or this is the person that gave you a bath when you couldn't get out the bed or this is the person that was there for you when your mother died and, and did just amazing things that you didn't expect her to do. So you know, when you think about it from that perspective, all this little stuff about not taking out the trash or, or, or whatever it may be, that's, that's kind of small. So remember those things. All right. And our advice would be, um, we said in our earlier session that going into marriage, not making divorce an option. So mm -hmm. don't go into marriage with divorce even being on the plate. Divorce should not be an option. And also yeah. I agree with protecting him. As many a times I done ran out on that CFL floor. That was back in my <laughs> I don't do that no more. But mm -hmm. yeah, I just, because I'm overly protective. I just want to protect him at all costs. And people, I know his heart. I know how he is, how kind he is. And I feel like other people don't. So if you say something to my husband, it's, it's going to be a problem. That was my old days. But God is within me now. So keep God first in your marriage. And then what else would you say? Um, I think earlier we talked about, first, everybody says something good, you know, so we all, we can repeat that. But the one thing is that make sure you compromise, right? I said, well, yeah, you know, right. Yeah. So make sure you compromise. And then also it's okay to take an L sometimes. I heard Taco mention earlier, I took an L, but it's okay to lose an argument sometimes. Just walk away, live for another day. Yep. Choose your battles. Choose your battles. Like I think we all been married long enough to choose your battles. So if you're young in marriage or in a relationship, it's okay to lose sometimes those battles. That'd be it. All right. Thanks, all right, guys. Everyone. Thanks. Appreciate you guys. All right. Peace right. out. Thank yep. Thank you. Give each other a kiss. We want to see that K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, sweetheart. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. right.